So good morning, and thank you for giving me well, the opportunity to be here and to give me the opportunity to discuss the issue of uh, Tibet in, in this forum. I would like to thank the FIBAR Foundation and Judge uh, Baltasar Garzón because since the beginning of the Tibet case, he has not only been a case of inspiration for this case, because we started so many years ago, and at that time, no one in this country, nor even beyond this country, was supporting the case or thought that the case had a basis. But right from the beginning, with uh, the judge, uh, uh, Baltasar Gazon has uh, supported right from the beginning the Tibet uh, people. So it was nine years ago at a summer course uh, from organized by the University Complutense when we were discussing the rights of Tibetan people. So he took that advantage for and of, offered them the, ch the chance to present their case uh, before the Spanish uh, courts. So, as I said, we've been on this project for many years now. We have had the participation of legal experts, academics, etc. And I must say that right from the beginning, I would like to thank the work carried out by Maundele uh, uh, and Maite Parejo and uh, the lawyer Benitez. And as Baltasar has mentioned, well, we would not have been able to travel this uh, long way without the support of Alan Cantos from the uh, Committee for the Support of the Tibet. We would not have made it so far if it had not been for his help. And well, we both always say that the only source for inspiration, our genuine inspiration, comes from the Tibetan victims. So today we have with us Tutem Watson. He is a victim from Tibet because his uh, mother and sister were disappeared, were made disappear, and he suffered uh, tortures. He is the president of the House of Tibet. So we would like to thank him dearly for helping us, helping us to uh, well, to do this legal pilgrimage that we've been following for nearly 10 years now. I will very briefly summarize, well, the Tibet case. And well, as I mentioned before, everything started in July 2005 when this uh, complaint was uh, presented. And well, the judge at the time was Ismael Moreno. I also would like to mention and this is what is often mentioned nowadays in the amendments about the laws. So in terms of the powers given to the public uh, prosecution, well, the public ministry not only opposed itself to the complaint, saying or on the basis that there was no link, and at the same time, they uh, used the Article 2.7 of the Charter of New United Nations, and they said that we were intervening in the jurisdiction of China. So despite that initial report of the public prosecutor, then that decision was appealed. But when the hearing was about to be conducted, we received an unexpected piece of news and an unexpected legal reaction just on September 2005. And that was the sentence of uh, about the Guatemala case. So that made the appeal to be postponed. And then three months later, all those uh, grounds and the previous requirements of the Guatemala case were used. And in January 2006, the Section 4 of the um, National Criminal Court, on the one hand, admitted literally, firmly, and clearly that a genocide had been committed, was being committed at the Tibet, and then said that the Chinese courts had not been interested in admitting the case. And actually, the people who recur to courts were 
made to disappear. So therefore, it considered that uh, Spanish courts had comp had a jurisdiction. So Juez Ismael Moreno, or the judge Ismael Moreno, had to instruct, investigate the case, or started to investigate the case. And then we presented a number of uh, witnesses and victims so that they could ratify all the facts that were claimed. So then we also found the opposition of the public prosecutor uh, to these evidence, to these evidence requests. So they wanted us to support this evidence and then, well, uh, we wanted us to prove whether those cases were true or not. It is like if we had uh, presented like fake evidence coming from these, uh, produced by these international organizations. Well, we denounced these practices and then in summer 2006, Tuntan Wanchen, the first, uh, well, the Tibet victim presented, well, was presented before the uh, judge, okay, or gave his deposition. That immediately caused the reaction of the Chinese government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So we are talking about June 2006, and here we started to see the causes for the next two amendments, where they demanded or required that this case of Tibet had to be treated in a vigilant digi manner by the Spanish courts, and so that the case would be um, shelved. So, well, we had only had the deposition of one of the victims and on request of the public prosecutor and with the approval of the judge, the depositions were not given before the judge Ismael Moreno and to prevent that dissemination, so they uh, asked to the depositions to be done through regulatory commissions. So for that, we had to interview uh, lots of, uh, dozens of witnesses. Uh, so regulatory commissions were everywhere. Whenever we had a witness a, 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 or a victim, we took the position, so we received them from all over the world, nearly. So, but throughout these two years, of these letters rogatory that were delaying the process. So both the public prosecutor and the judge uh, were surprised when at the end of 2007, they got a response from the Chinese government where, well, well, that they did not recognize the international jurisdiction and that they were not ready or willing to collaborate with that initiative. So therefore, we couldn't have the deposition of the victims or the witnesses that most of them are exiled in India. So a few months later, in summer 2008, just months before the celebration of the Olympic Games, and I don't know whether you can remember whether there were a number of demonstrations, and it was a, a repressive campaign in Tibet that we later on also um, denounced. All the also uh, were presented to the um, to the judge, and then again with the opposition of the Moreno judge, and then with the opposition again of the Chinese government. At that time, there were new leaders in the Chinese market. And then we got evidence, we received evidence from um, 600 enforced disappearances, thousands of tortures, uh, hundreds and hundreds of illegal detentions, and more than 200 murders. So we presented that case on the grounds of crimes against humanity. And then Santiago Pedraz here in Spain admitted that um, our case, so the international, the Chinese government wanted to clean here, to have a good image. So 
for the next three years, well, the progress that we couldn't make, we could not, we, we didn't make in the first, in the previous three years, all that became speed, sp speed it up. And then since early 2008, we started to see the first signs of the amendments that were carried out later in the year. And well, despite the diplomatic pressure that perhaps that will be uh, Discussing here, well, diplomatic pressure from the from Israel, also Obama administration were, com were complaining about everything that was happening here in the criminal courts. It was just in May 2009 where two letters of requests were sent to the uh, Public Republic of China, where we had uh, Juez Moreno uh, as well as Juez Petras who was also asking the need or, or permission to go to the territory to do his investigation in the temples and in the places where allegedly the uh, disappearances and the murders had been conducted a year ago. Three, year, three days later, China received the letters of requests. The embassy of China in Madrid sent out a letter to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and to the National Criminal Court requesting requesting the uh, end of the case. Five days later, there was a meeting at the House of Parliament and where the two mainstream political powers at that time agreed on the reform of the law of international, of international justice in 2009. So in the, on the grounds of links links or, or, or relevant link of uh, with Spain we didn't know what they meant but relevant link with Spain well could that be like 20 percent that 20 percent of the public debt that um, the Chinese government uh, uh, Spanish public debt that is uh, Chinese government has well yes we could see that yes that 20 percent of the Spanish public that, yes, was a weighty aspect that drove the current uh, amendment of the legislation. Then in the official Gazette, the new reform for international justice was published. Then the file was uh, requested from us or from Peras uh, judge. And then they agreed that there was no actual national link. However, on, we additionally to that, we presented a number of um, evidence. Tunja Wanchen was a Spanish national, but not in 2008. And we said that, well, there has been a, a massive transfer of uh, Chinese national, and that has been a violation of the uh, Geneva Treaty. So unfortunately, with, uh, Judge uh, Pedra did not admit this argument. He did it later on uh, regarding the COSO case, but unfortunately, it was filed, it was shelved, this case uh, for in terms of crimes against uh, humanity committed in 2008 to the uh, Tibetan people was filed. Then uh, Judge Moreno will continue to do a number of proceedings and activities uh, relevant for the case, cases of torture. So also forcing, uh, changing the international jurisdiction. So the breach of the Geneva Treaty was admitted by the public prosecutor. So we continue to request international arrest orders. So systematically, the answer that we got was a no. Last, we presented a number of evidence uh, within the command chain in the government and the state of China. And as a consequence of that, right now, and I'm finishing November last year, well, the fourth section of the National Criminal Court received two uh, requests or two files that kind of dismantled the universal jurisdiction. So the 
cases of Yantimin were uh, found uh, guilty. And then Hu Jintao was a former president of China who stepped down from power in March 2013. And, well, we could not have denounced him up until then. He extended the uh, claim against Yu Jintao. On the one hand, this caused the diplomatic reaction that I'm sure that you've seen on the news. So we, uh, refer, we refer to them as consultations to the ambassador in Peking. And then there was a delegation, a Chinese delegation that came, that went to the parliament and then requested, requested to put an end to the universal jurisdiction. At the same time, the spokesperson of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs in China in a public announcement said that they should go ahead if they dare to do so. So three weeks later, Alfonso Alonso presented the derogation or de facto derogation of that international jurisdiction. And the result is well known by all of you. Three days later, uh, three days later after the publication in the official cassette. So at this point in time, Judge Moreno has concluded the case and has um, presented the case to the penal court uh, well, to see whether it has uh, room or it has, there is a case according to the new thing in Iraq. And now for Jose Estevez. Well, they are asking us whether you could talk about the possible lack of defense when you are faced in a situation that you find a judge with one, uh, with one way of uh, seeing things, a different judge with a different way of seeing things, and then the uncertainty that that generates in victims uh, within the context of universal jurisdiction. And then because we are at the mercy or we are subject to the concept. That's it, right? Jose? Something else uh, on what you do. Well, to make it clear, you said that a Chinese parliamentary commission came to Spanish parliament to have an interview with uh, Spanish MPs and with all political parties, right? Do we know what the, the, the message? That's my question for you, apart from lessons that we've learned and what to do. Let me start with the last one, yeah, that is right. There was that meeting that was on December the 12th um, in 2003, last year then. We know who attended. No one has admitted it uh, formally, right? At least publicly. Well, I've seen some news published, but does not just it. When we knew that the meeting had taken place, we in the University of Valencia, in the legal faculty, this legal faculty addressed those that were the six person of all political parties in the Foreign Affairs Commission. And some of them confirmed that it happened. You should have been yesterday when political representatives were here. For example, representatives from UPND, PNV, Convergence and Union, all those representatives confirmed that there was such a meeting and they requested termination of the case and to say that in Tibet, there was no human rights um, violation. It was just propaganda by the Dalai Lama. As for expectations and lessons that we've learned from the point of view of um, China and Tibet and their victims, well, as Ray Brody mentioned, we could not expect to have the necessary political conditions to start a case, at least here. That would be ideal, but it is not possible. Right now, there is no government that gathers all the conditions because of the trade and financial risk it entails. A country where we could find a greater link or, or favorable conditions because of their colonial, colonial past was India, British India. Where there is no recognition of universal jurisdiction, in the UK we've got many Tibetan people exiled. But if we check the list 
agreements entered into by Cameron's government where they've uh, given, uh, for example, waste management to Chinese companies plus uh, other conditions that will not be met, we decided to come uh, here to Spain. As for lack of defense or security protection, I think that Justice Moreno's uh, criterion has not much the, the, the criteria of other judges in the criminal court. Actually, when the uh, National Gazette publishes the new law, means that the public prosecutor office needs to take a, a take, need to take a stand, and without referring to the report of the prosecutor office, they just have a deed and they terminate the provisional uh, trial. So there is no 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 option to appeal. So we filed an appeal for annulment. And it was dealt with in a fast track way, just a couple of uh, paragraphs, and saying that, well, it had to be solved. So I think the criteria that were f f that's been followed here has been different from other trials and make us um, well feel unprotected. I mean, victims, the same as for Tibetan victims who, for over 50 years, had no recognition by UN bodies and no one tried to.